Hey guys, it's your girl Mina Q and welcome back to another Love is Blind recap and review and we are on season 7 episode 9. Woo! Man, 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 we have got some things to discuss but before we do that, let's make sure we like, comment, and subscribe because this is more than a Love is Blind review and recap channel, baby. We got a lot to talk about. We got a lot of jokes and a lot of laughs so join me on that but... For right now, let's stay on our Love is Blind track and see what these couples have been up to. Monica and Steven are gone, Jesus. Won't he do it? My God is an awesome God, okay? An awesome God. Won't he do it? I'm so happy that they are gone because that makes this one less couple we got to worry about breaking up. I'm too happy. I'm too joyful. I understand that. But that's fine. Let's get into the couples that are still here. Taylor and Garrett end up talking a lot about their future and how they want to move forward because both of their families seem a little unsure about this process in one form or another. Garrett's family is just very, very protective of him. The way that they were kind of like giving Taylor a little bit of the business, like you got to be sure, you got to be ready, you guys are moving fast and everything like that. It was it was a little like they're not really on board, but Taylor's like, hey man, I just want to be a part of your family. So if y'all end up deciding letting me in, like I love your son, that's where we're at with it. Now, Taylor's family's a little bit different. They do not want to be on camera, specifically her dad. So they talk a lot about how they want to move forward if their families don't get on board with this situation. But she does bring up again how she really wants them to be able to move to San Diego and start this life together. And we're still, as the viewer, a little unsure, like, man, I, is he going to do this? We hope he wants to do this because they seem happy together. And he does not disappoint. Uh, in a meeting with Taylor and her friends, he just gushes, 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 gushes over Taylor, how much he loves her. He would do anything for her. He would move anywhere for her. Give up anything for her, baby. Lay down, be on bended knee. Can you tell me how? He is ready. He is a boy to a man through this process of Love is Blind. And it's really cute to see Taylor being so in love. Her friends mentioned that they've never seen her like this, touching Garrett's face, smiling, looking like an emoji. They can't believe what they're seeing. So it seems like, at least to her friends and family members that we've met so far, that this is a real thing for Taylor. Tim and Alex end up going to Alex's house and it looks like Alex ran up out of there with a suitcase and five outfits she could find to wear over the course of the month because her house looks a little crazy. Now, I'm not one. I don't like to judge women's homes. I mean, I understand there's messy and there's dirty. And I think it was just a very, very messy situation. I think she alludes to the fact that she's kind of a bit of a hoarder. She likes to keep her things. She has about like eight trash bags of things that she's trying to decide whether they're going to Goodwill. She's throwing away, keeping or whatever. She's trying to get her life together, but it seems like they must have called her and said, you're on the show. And she just grabbed five outfits and left. That's the way her house looked. It was insane. Tim didn't do a whole lot of judging of that situation, but he was like, I'm going to stick beside her, was basically what he had to offer to her. But their episode is spent kind of deciding how they want to live and probably at Tim's place and his space and figuring out what to do with all of her stuff. Now, Hannah and Nick, my other least favorite couple, <laughs> they end up having a dinner with Hannah's brother, her younger brother, who they let us know he is gay, but they didn't have to tell us that, baby. We have eyes. We knew he was gay. So they come in and they're having this dinner. For whatever reason, Hannah is making dinner in a full leather coat. Who are you, Morpheus? The, the more I watch her, the more I just don't care for any of her life decisions. But she's making this dinner for all three of them. And when I tell you within like seconds of her brother coming in the room, both of them are already at Nick D's neck. I mean, making jokes. At one point, I think, they call him a bitch boy. It's it's just, it's unhinged the amount of things that are going on. I personally do not know how Nick is doing this. I don't know what his, <laughs> what, what self-efficacy of just resiliency he has in his body, but I need some of it because he, he, he's got his tongue and emotions in check 
he either loves Hannah or he's out of his mind and can't tell that he's being treated terribly. But they go through this dinner and it seems like a lot of shots are being taken at Nick. Not seems, are. I'm saying seems, but clearly all of the shots that are being sent in the room are being taken at Nick. And at one point, Nick makes a joke back like, well, you know, if I'm gonna go to work until you get a job, I guess you're doing the laundry. And she's like, er, first of all, that's not funny. Don't be making jokes. I'm the one who makes jokes around here, not you. And everyone's kind of like, I mean, I guess, I, I don't know. Like, she's the only person in the room who's allowed to make jokes. And the thing about a joke is, it should be funny to everybody. Otherwise, you're just being mean. You're being a bully. And she's definitely being a bully. So at one point, she exits the room and her brother and Nick get to talk a little bit. And her brother kind of seconds like, yeah, she's mean. She hurts my feelings a lot. And there's a lot of times I can't account for how she's showing up. And I'm not really a fan of it. But, you know, she's my sister and I love her. And Hannah comes back into the room and is like, what are you guys talking about? They're like, you! You! What do you think we're talking about? This is Love is Blind. <laughs> we're not talking about taking a trip or something. So everybody seems to be on board with the fact that Hannah is a little bit much. Now, they also end up meeting Hannah's family. And Nick is very respectful, brings gifts. It's very sweet, very cute. And when Nick leaves the table, because somebody's always got to leave the table so you can talk about him. I don't know why they be acting like they're not talking about him. Y'all done plan for this little meeting. She's like, oh, remember you're supposed to go get the thing? What thing? The thing. Oh, right. I'm supposed to leave the table so y'all can have the moment to talk about me. Right, 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 right. I'm, I'll be back. So he leaves the table and her family is like, hey, chill on Nick. Like, you're doing a little much. You have a lot of expectations for this man. A lot of things that you really need to, like, bring down to a 10. If you want to marry somebody, you need to have some compromise in your heart. You need to understand they're not perfect. You need to love them and, and see and understand and know what you're in it for. Like, they're really trying to, like, bring her down to a space of reality. Because right now, she's living in some cloudy world where Nick is just supposed to do all of the things for her. You don't like him! You don't like him. Let him go. Both of you go be happy. Go be happy with someone else. I, 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 can't, I can't say it enough. I can't say it loud enough. I can't say it enough. I wish I could have talked to them. They need a... Why does Love is Blind not have a therapist? Why is that not a part of this? Every season I've ever watched, I'm like, why is there no therapy component of this? Usually any person or any couple getting married has some kind of like pastor or or someone that they talk to. Why is that not a part of these people getting married in like 21 days? I will never understand that. But they're asking her to just relax, give him a chance. You're the one making it hard. You seem stressed out. He seems fine. Hannah, relax is basically what her family had to say. Ramses and Marissa finally get to meet Marissa's family. And when I tell you... This interaction was tense, okay? I was sweating during this interaction. Of all the seasons of Love is Blind, I've never seen somebody come for somebody the way Marissa's mom was coming for Ramsey's. I mean, all she needed was two pieces of bread, some cheese, and a piece of turkey, and she would have been pressing this man like a panini. It was insane the way she came for him. I mean, from his hair to his looks, to his energy, that he's soft. I mean, she was rattling these things off like it was nothing. And Ramsey's is like, mm hmm, mm hmm. Trying to be respectful, but I would be like, who? He not through with me yet. That's, that's where I would have been with it because she was doing the utmost. I mean, at one point, she even called Marissa a bitch. It was just. It was just a lot, and and understandably so, based on what we know about her, she had been married, uh, Marissa's dad left, and she had all these kids to raise, and so she's very much in a space of, I'm an independent woman who don't need no man, and I don't want you to need no man, and I don't want no man to need you, like, she is, uh, ah, she don't like no men, I just, she might be gay. I don't know at this point because the way she was talking, she is not here for it. But the interaction with the siblings goes really well. They seem to really like Ramsey's. The mom, she ain't on it. She ain't sold on it. She basically tells them marriage ain't forever. Marriage is for the time that your marriage is for. 
and that's that. And I'm, it's, that's that's real though. Now that part I can agree with. Marriage does not necessarily mean forever. Nobody said that. Everybody wants that, but nobody said that. So she did bring some reality to her very, very intense interaction with them. And I don't know that they took it as much because he's just like, I'm going to get through this interaction with your mother. I don't know what to say or what to do, but I'm just going to sit here and yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. I understand. Sure. I got you. Yes, I feel you. Yes, I understand. I want to marry your daughter. Please don't kill me. Kind of a thing. But ultimately, Marissa and Ramsey's end up having a conversation about how they want to have kids and the timeline of that. And Ramsey's is like, okay, I was thinking like three to four years. And Marissa is like, I was thinking two and a half, maybe three. And they're not at all on the same page in terms of when they want to have this kid. So Marissa's basically like, I do not want to get back on birth control. I can't do that. That's not something I'm comfortable with. And Ramsey's like, okay, I hear you. Um, so 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 what should we do? Because I'm not I, I want us to have a life together. I want us to enjoy each other. I want us to enjoy like, you know, just private time as a couple before we bring a baby immediately into this situation. So it is clear through this conversation that they are having very much so unprotected sex. And she's just like, well, I mean, I guess we can just use condoms then. And Ramses is like, I'm sorry, me and my, me and my wife are going to be using condoms. And he's like, okay, um, well, you know, condom sex doesn't really, it doesn't really feel so great to me. And she's like, oh, condom sex is the best. I've had some of my best sex with condoms. And even me as a lesbian, I was like, for real? For real? That's 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 true. I couldn't believe it. Now, either way, regardless of whatever the situation is, it seems as though this is going to be a point of contention. But truthfully, I mean, if a woman does not want to go on birth control, a woman don't want to go on birth control, baby. That's just it. I don't know what y'all going what y'all going to do. I don't know what the plan is, but I I understand it. I understand her not wanting to put her body through all of that. And maybe you guys need to figure something else out as a unit so that if you need to have unprotected sex, you do something to make that easier for both of you. Maybe somebody needs to put something away for later. And then when it's time, you guys go and you handle it differently. Hey, I, hey baby, I don't know. I don't know. But no woman's going to get pressured into using any means of birth control that she does not want to use for her body hormonally. So that whole conversation is just very interesting because they have mostly just talked about sleeping with each other this entire time. That's what their whole relationship has been. And it seems like now... They might have been able to get past the military stuff. I don't know if they're going to get past this because... That is the glue that's been holding them together. So we'll we'll see. We'll see if they're going to be able to get past it. Because now they got the military issues and they got condom issues. God bless you. This episode ends with Ashley and Tyler having what I'd have to say is the first interaction where we're like not watching them pray. I mean, everything that they do is just love and light and prayer and all these very beautiful things. Well, this time Tyler had something for Ashley. So at some point, it seems as though Tyler tells Ashley, hey, I'm actually a sperm donor and I am the father to three children of a friend of mine. And Ashley is, does not take this information well. Now, it seems like her bigger issue with it is the fact that they never discuss this. Now, throughout everything they've done in the pods, it's been very, very conversation heavy. So I 100% understand her feeling like, hey, why didn't you tell me this? We've been talking forever. We're about to get married. You should probably let me know that you have three kids somewhere. However, these are not three kids he has to take care of. These are not three kids that even know he existed. These are not three kids that are in his life. So to me, I'm kind of like, it's, it, it's, it's bothersome because why omit it? That's what the real issue I feel like here. I don't know that she's really bothered that he has three kids. She can't possibly be bothered by three kids that are never going to bother her. 
but I'm sure she could definitely be bothered by the fact that it's like, if you're going to keep this from me, what else are you going to keep from me? Like, that's kind of a that's kind of a big thing, but again, it's not like he has three kids out there in the world that he's actually taking. So care for of. me, I probably would look at it and be like, "Hey, I really don't like that you kept something like this from me. I need us to have full communication, be very open, honest, and transparent in everything that we do because this feels like I'm being blindsided, and I'm not here for that." But as far as the fact that these kids exist in the world, I don't know. It's you know. People donate kids every day. But this has been episode nine. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let's see what happens because we are getting closer and closer to this wedding. All right. And I know it's going to get explosive. I can't wait to see how it gets even juicier on episode 10. See you guys there.